Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to enjoy the following three hours of live wrestling entertainment. Tonight, Isabella Garcia teams up with Sweet Marie to dish out some revenge on Anna Cross for previously injuring Gloria. Right after that, the War Raiders will be stepping inside the ring as Carl and Wolf will go all out on each other. And later on, Queen Raiden and Christina Van Mortis will decide once and for all who is the tougher brawler. Coming to you live from Helsinki, Finland, I am your host Kuparipartha, and this is Payback, the Brawlmasters Premium Show. Alright, welcome to what just might be the most exciting part of Season 2 and for many of the brawlers uh, performing tonight, this is the most important night after all. Tonight will determine once and for all who is the actual top dog, who among these rivals is the better one, bragging rights will be decided, champions will be crowned and a lot of the debts will be settled. This is Payback. And as a side note before we start, a special rule stipulation will be applied tonight. Now, if you've been watching throughout Season 2, you know that rivalry matches do not get you any season points. However, tonight that rule will be abolished just for tonight's show. So every match tonight will be awarding all the people points. Because tonight it's all about commemorating all these rivalries, all the drama that has made this show special and uh, that has made all the excitement worth it. So yes, here are the matches of tonight and oh boy there's gonna be plenty of good ones. Starting off right off we have the No Holds Barred match between Furious Ford and Cutie by Cook for the Pure Wrestling Championship. Following that up, Master Sal and Marshall David will be going up against each other in another no hold spark match. Get ready for this one because there's plenty of no hold spark tonight, no disqualifications. The third match we have Outla Casey versus Philip Foster. And right after that, Taking Young versus Lord Lovenberg. Coming to this fifth match, we eat it off just a little bit. As we set aside some of the rivalries and get actual season matches going on, we have the Natural Disasters, Mad Dog Whitney and Riley the Nightmare going up against the newcomers Selena Bochamp and Caitlin O'Neill in a Tornado Tag Team match. The sixth match we have a handicap match, Anna Cross going up against Isabella Garcia and Sweet Marie, a two on, uh, well, a one on two match to be more precise. The seventh match will be a no hold spark match between Carl the Jarl and Wolf Anderson, one of the most anticipated matches throughout the season. The eighth match we will have a triple threat match between Caleb Flash, Captain Cooper and Dr. Edwards. Coming up to the ninth match, Martha Baker will be challenging Gaffy Gardner for the Pure Wrestling Championship. The 10th match will be a triple threat ladder match for the Men's Extreme Fighting Championship. Mark Hunter will be defending the title against both Palosic the Kremlin and Flyboy. 11th match, a no hold spark match for the Men's Grandmaster title. Big Ham will be challenging Butcher Pedro. The 12th match, a Steel Gates match, this one for the strongest of brawlers title as Thunderstorm Andre is challenging the champion, Blue Brood. The 13th match, a no holds spark match between Quinn Raiden and Christina Van Mortis. The most anticipated match of the season 2. It won't get any better than this. And finally, the main event of the night, a no holds spark match between Julia Rose and Magic Maggie for the Extreme Fighting Championship. 
I'm already salivating over here. These are gonna be awesome. So enough about introductions and let's get on with the show and start the first match. The highly anticipated match between Furious Ford and Cutie Pie Cook. The challenger, Furious Ford, is looking in fine shape tonight. And no doubt about it, this has been one of the most anticipated matches he has had ever since starting out in the Pro Masters. The Pure Racing Championship on the line here, and Ford has very good chances of getting it. Even though he lost his initial chance uh, that started out this rivalry, he's been picking up victory after victory. And no doubt about it, he's fully fired up and prepared to get the championship tonight for himself. Know that about it, the most adorable brawler we have in the roster, as well as the pure wrestling champion himself, Cutie Pie Cook. Although resulting lately into a bit of underhanded tactics to keep Ford at bay, but this has been a perfect setup for Ford to fi get fired up and prepare for this matchup. Introducing the challenger from Finland, weighing in at 257 pounds, Furious Four. And introducing the champion from the United Kingdom, weighing in at 143 pounds, he is the men's pure wrestling champion, King. You can see it in everyone's eyes. They all want this championship. And here we go, we're starting off the first match of tonight, the payback event, and what a beautiful match up we have. We have Cutie by Cook and Furious Ford fighting it out, and no higher stakes tonight than the Pure Wrestling Championship on the line. The defending champion will definitely have his work cut out for him, as Ford has been looking extremely great as of late. Ford just tossing Cutie Pie around, now choking against the ring mat there. Uh, going for the early cover, no doubt about it. A loss here would be devastatingly humiliating one. Fortunately for Cutie Pie, he's still in this. But for how much longer, lifting Cutie Pie now up, gets an elbow in there. 
and Cutie by starting to get a bit of a counter back in there, setting Ford up onto the ropes there, trapping the arm and now dragging on the arm. Reminder that this is a no hold spark match, so anything goes, there's no disqualifications. You can use absolutely any method, any tactic, any weapon, you can do anything you can imagine, and it's all allowed. As long as the match ends, ends inside the ring to a pinfall or a submission. A nice solid DDT there by Cutie Pie, who's immediately returning to the ring. Fourth left dazed under the crowd, and Cutie Pie flying with a frog splash connecting to the ringside. That's a really long way down, and apparently it's paying off. Ford able to get his leg up and kick Cutie Pie straight to the face. Cutie Pie retaliating by getting the knee to the face. Gets a counter again. Ford getting the upper hand here. Starts solid kick, stopping Cutie Pie in the tracks. And now smashing the head straight to the ring post. A heavy smack there, no doubt about it. That's gonna be leaving you a bit dazed. And he has free reign. There's no count outs no count -outs tonight. To Again, obviously, if there's no disqualifications, then there are no count outs. Slamming Cutie Pie onto the steel bar barricade. Gets out of the way there. Cutie Pie again meeting the kick to the gut. And um, here's the headlock and punch straight to the top of the head. Ford is keeping Cutie Pie at bay. Tossing, tossing the champion around like nothing. And Ford is getting back inside the ring now. Gets back out. Out of the ring. What's his plan here? Something, something. No doubt about it. Could have been planned here. Cutie Pie able to catch Ford off guard and throws Ford against the steel barricade there. Stomps on the leg. And hard to see from this angle, but I believe yes. Ford has been again set up on the barricade. He's Taking a moment to rest there as Cutie Pie enters back inside the ring. Taking the opportunity to tell that his opponent. Ford getting back inside the ring now. Cutie Pie holding guard up, but it doesn't matter. Gets another kick straight to the card. Got uh, Ford is really softening up uh, the midsex and the torso there with those constant kicks that keep, get, keep uh, catching Cutie Pie off guard. Cutie Pie tossing forward to the ropes there, a heavy smash there, and followed by a drop kick, dropping forward outside the ring. And Cutie Pie joining in on that as well. Looks like Cutie Pie is, has plenty, plenty enough ready to bring this match to a close as he's throwing forward back inside the ring, and no doubt about it, he's gonna be moving here for the eat defeat. Ford definitely eating defeat, defeat right now and goes for the cover, kicks out, kicks out the shoulder up. That was a long two count, but Ford is still in it. But for how much longer? No doubt about it. Cutie Pie about to line up for a submission maneuver here as long as he can get Ford down again. But Ford with another kick straight to the cup, lifting Cutie Pie up. Cutie Pie escaping the fireman's carry, another kick there. Ford going up there, planting the face, here's the cover, shoulders are down, two, no, gets the shoulder up, up. shoulder up right before three, that was real close for Ford, a knee lift straight, and now a knee to the back, Cutie Pie rolling out, misses, well, doesn't miss, but gets the guard, and again, another kick straight to the guard there, Ford definitely trying to target that uh, torso area, to possibly go for a submissive maneuver, hard to say from here, and there we go, the head scissors are locked in, Cutie Pie going for the head scissors, trying to squeeze, and no doubt about it, Ford trying to, look. no, taps out, taps out, Ford taps out, but a very anticlimactic ending to the, to the match, but nevertheless, Cutie Pie retaining championship.
Well, nothing le left to say about that. PewDiePie took the opportunity and got the perfect opportunity to get four out of this competition. Next up, we have Master Sal and Marshall David in No Hold Spark match. Sonic competitor and uh, definitely a welcome addition to the Brawl Masters. Master Sal here, a master technician and a very tough contender uh, at that. Always great to see this old man fighting. I know that about it, uh, a great op opponent, no matter who he's facing. He's got respect, he's got the talent, he's got everything a brawler suit has. David, a very, very solid competitor, the master of the sleeper hold, able to take out any misbehaving brawler that we've had, and his skills definitely appreciated by every single one. A man who always considers himself main event material, an uncrowned champion. He wants to show exactly why here tonight. The bell rings, and here we go. David the War, uh, uh, David the Warden. Well, previously David the Warden. Nowadays David Marshall, and going up against Master Sal. These two have been fighting it out for a few good weeks now, learning from each other as uh, for a good amount of time, studying each other and improving their respective techniques. Not to mention always showing respect to one another. And tonight they take it uh, to the uh, ultimatum, to the top of the hill, so to speak. A no holds barred match. Everything is illegal. <laughs> Everything is legal. Everything is legal. As these two test each other out in the ultimate conditions. David, the wo David with the su back suplex there, and now Sal in a bit of a hint there, as David keeps. Attacking him while he's grounded, keeping keeping the old master down. Now getting punched straight to the face there. No way out for Sal there. Sal being lifted up there and being tossed back inside the ring. Know that about it, David did a good amount of softening up there. But he's gonna have to keep up the momentum if he wants to bring this master close. Targeting the leg now. Another knee drop straight to the ankle. Lifting Sal back up there, a solid kick there, followed up by DDT, Sal is down, and Sal is currently not looking uh, as hot as he was entering this matchup. He looked to be full of energy as usual, but now he's just eating every single attack up, barely even fighting back, if he's fighting back at all. He is definitely off, David locking up with the headlock and goes for a bulldog. And now climbing up to the top rope there, and from there a flight, a like drop straight 
straight to the head. Sal finally getting some energy back. Rolling out of harm's way and goes for a German suplex there. Sal now lining David up and going for a drop kick straight to the back. David gets a kick in, dropping Sal down, lifting him back up. No doubt about it. There's the hammer lock followed by a DDT. Nasty there. Cover up. David now. Two. No. Sal kicks out. But no doubt about it. That, that's an immense amount of damage Sal has already eaten up. There's no way Sal is able to come back from this far. As the sleeper hold is applied here. Going, trying to get the knockout victory here. Sal still holding on. He doesn't look to be too much trouble there. David lets him go. No doubt about it. He, he, he could tell that Sal was not about to pass out from that. Here we go. Another leg drop. Straight to the chest there. And now Sal. Sal with a reversal. Able to get a neck breaker. Dropping David down. Now the arm ringer locked in. No. David able to escape from that one. Setting up for us. Nice. Very interesting technique, backbreaker there. Here's the cover, leg hooked up. Kicks out, kicks out. Only a two count. It's impressive that Sal is still fighting on, but he's not going to be fighting on for much long. There's another hammer lock followed by a DDT. Another heavy hit straight to the head. And David looking like he's wanting to end this. And there he goes, another sleeper hold. In the center of the ring, no escape, no way out of this one. Sal passes out. Sleeper hold has done its job and David gets a victory. A really quick one, might I add. It was really extremely one-sided. Like damn, just, just damn. I don't know what happened to Sal tonight, but David was absolutely on top of the game. Not much respect shown here, just complete and pure dominance. It's time for the third match of the night, a no hold spark match between Outlaw Casey and Philip Foster. A man who's always filled with charisma, good feels, and a hard fighting spirit, Outlaw Casey. If there's anyone who deserves more, or at least believes he deserves more, it's Casey. And not about it, a fight tonight is exactly what he deserves. Wait a minute, what, what is this music? I thought it was supposed to go up against Philip Buster. What, what is this? It's, it is supposed to be Philip Buster. And then what? Wait, 
Wait, you're you're telling me this guy is Philip? But this is the masked man who came in behind Casey uh, on the last show, forced him to fight against Balosek. If, if this truly is Philip, he has taken quite the transformation from his gentlemanly nature to what looks like a... Well, coming from England, Jack the Ripper inspired. Well, this sure promises to be interesting. Yeah, I, I have, I am beside myself. I, I am more confused than ever. Well, the crowd seems to love him, but and Casey seems a bit perplexed as well. Well, I suppose we'll have to see what comes next. The animosity and here we go, we're starting the third match of the night. We have Outlaw Casey and a man who claims to be Philip Foster. Now, if, if you watch the Friday's episode, well, not Friday's episode, but the previous episode of Raw Masters, you know that this man came up behind Casey and forced him to fight Balozic the Kremlin, even though Casey was seeming a bit hesitant that night. So it promises, hard, hard to say, it promises to be a good one, but if this truly is Philip Foster, I, I gotta wonder what what has what has happened with him. Like he used to be a kind gentleman with a lot of respect, and now he's this uh, mis uh, misformed, very threatening looking, kind of like a brawler kind of a thing. H hard to say from here. He has definitely taken a turn for the worse. Well, I suppose we'll just have to see if this this means anything for tonight. Philip now to thrown, having thrown Casey outside the ring. Casey getting out of the way, misses Philip there. And now brought down, the arm lock has been applied. Philip twisting on the arm and oh, that's, that's very malicious there. And looks like we're going, yeah, no doubt about it. This is Philip, he's going for the pretty long ball. Already going for the longbow hold, but Casey able to fight fight it off right off. Casey throwing Philip across across the ring or the ring side actually, and Casey now back inside the ring, inviting Philip back in, getting ready for a attack there. An orphan light suplex, expertly done there. Casey dropped down with a solid kick. Casey retaliating with a kick of his own and a falling fist drop straight to the face and a drop kick to the back of the head. Strapping the arm there and looks like quite literally Casey getting a bit of payback there. Going for a similar twist on Philip. Misses completely with the double axe handle but decides to go for the cover nonetheless. Not even a two count. Philip still in this matchup, targeting the arm now. Casey lifting Philip up, lifted up into a firm and scary brought down with a gutbuster. 
knee meeting straight to that torso. Arm wrench, look, no, Philip with a forearm smash able to counter that. Locking up the head there and broke down with a suplex. And here's the cover. Two. No, Casey escapes. Able to get out of that one, even though the arm was locked up. Very interesting technique there, no doubt about it. Philip tossing Casey into the corner now. Lifting up into, into the top turnbuckle and looks like setting up for a... Yes, I believe this is the Tower of London. And here's the hook up. Two. No, gets the shoulder up, even right before three. It doesn't get any closer than that, so this is moments away from ending. If Casey isn't able to start fighting back here a bit more. Casey setting up DDT. A very solid technique there. And now looks like Casey going for the... Yep, there's the head scissors locked in, squeezing on the head. Philip rolls out. Well, rolls Casey off of him. And a springboard at back elbow. Philip now smashing the head of Casey. A few solid punches there. Lifting up and Casey dropping Philip down, catching the leg there. Get, catching hold and tossing Philip into the corner there. And, ooh, what a nasty chop that was. And uh, not her falling fist drop. Casey definitely styling on his opponent as he likes to. Dropping the arm there and a nasty arm breaker. That's gonna be leaving a mark. Well, not necessarily. And here we go. Casey going for the moonlight drive with Philip Foster. Leg hooked up. Shoulders are down. Two count. And three count. Casey. Casey does it. A well earned victory. I know that about it. Gonna be shutting up Philip for a good time now. If there is one thing this match has taught me, is that becoming an Edge Lord does not pay it. Intimidating outfit and appearance does not matter if you don't have the talent to back it off. And tonight, talent was in Casey's corner. Next up, we have the Noble Hold Spark match between Jake In Young and Lord Lovenberg. Idol, the Korean Idol, the K-pop star, taking Young. Looking pumped up as usual. I'm ready for this match. And I wonder if Jaken is going to be unleashing his wild side. He's the most prominent brawler that's always yearning for extreme rules. So not about it, he's going to be real happy about the no disqualification stipulation tonight.
228 pounds, Lord Lohenberg. The Dark Lord of the Limbo, the Crimson Knight, the Fallen Knight, Lord Lohenberg, here to settle things with Jack and Young once and for all. And here we go, the no holds part between Jake and Young and Lord Lovenberg. A match both of these brawlers have been waiting for ever since the start of the second season. And tonight they will settle it all once and for all. First one missing, but the second one connecting. A nice solid spin kick there by Jake and Young. Jake and has uh, proclaimed himself the act the number one extreme fighter succeeding ever since starting out succeeding and outperforming everyone when it came to extreme rules then we have lord lovenberg the titan of the season one fighting it out and already being covered only a one count though so lovenberg definitely has plenty of energy left uh, and his endurance is nothing short of impressive it takes immense amount of damage to drop the Crimson Knight out of the max. Targeting the shoulder now. Fully pulling on that, taking, keeping Lord Lovenberg down. Now passing straight to the helmet there. Bearhawk, no, gets an elbow straight to the face. No, taking, retaliating, lifting. Lifted up and brought down with a Death Valley driver. Lord Lovenberg taking control of the situation right now. Here's the cover. Two count, two count, only a two count. The fight is gonna continue on from here. Targeting the arm now, going going for a nice solid stomp there. And gets countered. Lovenberg now being brought down with a side slam. Taking a knee striking with the knee straight to the back Lovenberg bringing take him down and now lifted up and brought down with a clothesline but he's not done yet the arm is still locked up another clothesline and know that about it there's gonna be a third one there it is Lovenberg with a triple clothesline combo attack and heavy kick there and looks like setting up for a I believe yes the Lord Lovenberg special the torture rack is applied using his shoulders and no very beautifully escaping but then again Lord Lovenberg didn't didn't care to lock up one of those arms thrown into the corner now no taking able to counter misses the kick there and looks like set him up for a choke slam no the south of heaven and cover is here no he lets it go looks like taking us more plan for Lovenberg doesn't want to end this right here he wants to cause a bit more damage here before ending the night that might have been a mistake on his part Lovenberg getting control of the match back to his side there dropping taking down with another close line taking catching the leg dropping Lovenberg down and now climbing to the top rope it's gonna fly elbow straight to the chest and here's the hookup one two three and what a, what an end to that one taking young picking a solid victory some superstars doing what they do best here are the highlights
a victory that definitely establishes him shaking finally climbing to the top and keeping the top dog position between him and Lord Lovenberg. Next up, we will take a moment to break off from the rivalries and go for a nice little normal uh, matches. Well, normal, normal. Next up is gonna be a tornado tag team match between the team of Natural Disasters versus Celine Bochamp and Caitlin O'Neill. They're here. The animalistic team of the Bro Masters, Riley the Nightmare and Matt Doc Whitney, here presenting to you the natural disasters. Actually, currently ranking the bottom last tag team in the entire uh, series. Not only the women's tag team division, but, all, but just in general. They just haven't been having a good time, and whatever good time they've been having, they've been losing a lot to uh, the penalties occurred by both these members. Caitlin O'Neill back at it once again. A very impressive feat, making her way to a pay-per-view event even after debuting only one week earlier. But then again, this is a spot well deserved. She's shown immense talent, getting a victory after victory. And although losing the last match she was in and getting a penalty for that doesn't matter. She's always up for a good brawl. The Bochamp, the Lina, and they call me me. No doubt about it, she would make a great addition to the natural disasters. But tonight she's fighting against them. Fighting, well, mostly fighting for her, the sake of herself. But we'll see if she's gonna be able to act up in a team. A brawler who's all about herself and capturing everyone's attention. No doubt about she's gonna be still in that spotlight right here and right now. She is ready for this big match, and she knows everyone backstage will be watching her make an impact. It's going to be hard to keep And here we go, we start off the first tornado tag team match of the night. Well, first tag team match of the night. Okay, do we have another tag team match? I cannot remember. Anyway, here we have the natural disasters going up against the new bloods. Caitlin O'Neill and Selena Bochamps. And currently the natural disasters are being completely dominated by, by the newcomers. Selena uh, going after Whitney and Caitlin going after Riley the Nightmare. Brought down and Caitlin just constantly stomping and kicking. Riley down, keeping her down with constant, not showing any mercy with uh, the le those leg attacks. Meanwhile, Selena going counter after counter on Whitney. Whitney able to fight back just a bit, but not enough to get some headway here. Well, maybe, maybe now she did 
Caitlin going for an early cover on Riley. Whitney breaking it off immediately. Yeah, looks like Whitney ab finally able to shut shut Selena down. And what what a what an interesting fight. I'm just realizing that we have a literal cat cat versus dog situation. Riley, not Riley. Whitney versus Selena. A uh, Neko Mimi versus a uh, dog woman thing. Riley finally able to catch Caitlyn off guard. Be getting few hits in and now a strong head but Selena tossing Whitney outside the ring and gonna join, join the fight ringside herself. Whitney fully prepared for that one. Meanwhile Riley locking up the head of Caitlyn and punching rapid fire punches straight to the face followed by a very heavy elbow drop I could feel that shaking from here double handed choke those incoming as Caitlyn is tossed effortlessly, effortlessly around the ring there Selena able to get a counter in there now a kick and Whitney just flying about what was that I have no explanation Riley looking to line up for a very classy Koranko Buster. Caitlin eating it all up. No way to fight that off. And now here's the cover. Hooked up. Two. No kicks out. Very powerful attack there. Looks like Riley is setting up to finish Caitlin off. A very powerful super kick. No, that's gonna get followed up. Straight jacket suplex, and here's the cover again. Two. No, Caitlin able to fight it off. Selena not offering any kind of assistance to him, her teammate. Instead, continuing on to fight against Whitney in the ringside. Caitlin, meanwhile, able to get a jawbreaker, able to get some headway here, and bring in. Riley down with a sit-out match slam, hooking up the leg, one, no, only a one count. Caitlyn definitely in a very troublesome situation here, looks like setting up, there's a Irish curse, another one, no way, she's gonna go for a triple Irish curse. That's gonna be left, leave your back stinging. Caitlyn definitely needs to finish this one quickly. And there we go, the Emerald Flow is on Ireland's call. Hooking up the leg. Two. No, fights it off. Kicks out. Riley still in this fight. Selena coming in. Climbing to the top rope and she's gonna fly. A frog splash all the way to the bottom. Well, not to the bottom, but to the ring side. The natural disasters in a very bad situation. Selena in full control against Whitney and Caitlyn currently dominating against Riley. No, ca catches the leg there but goes for a nice solid kick reversal. Able to counter that one. Riley tossing Caitlyn around like nothing as she's able to get control of the match back to her side there. Tracking Caitlyn now trying to get her set up into the corner. There she goes. But what's the move here? Fails to connect with the kick there. Caitlin escaping the corner and a very nasty hair pull match slam there. A knee to the back there. No, Riley rising. That didn't face her at all. Bringing Caitlin down with a clothesline and looking looks like re getting ready to finish this one off. Lining up that the no super kick fails to connect. Selena and Whitney getting back inside the ring. Selena being dropped down by Whitney there and the natural disasters now in control of the match here. There's the setup. Oh nasty. Lifted up. Looks like Whitney preparing to finish Selena off here. And there we go. Face first. And here's the cover. Referee trying to get into position. No doubt about it, that amount of time. Referee was just running around and not doing his job. Gave uh, Celine an, uh, enough an opportunity to survive from that one. 
Whitney now going after Caitlin who broke up the pin earlier and Selena being set up into the corner by Riley Stomp fails to connect there as Selena is one step ahead of Riley there Whitney tossing Caitlin into the corner misses but gets an elbow for that Caitlin set up on the middle rope and here comes Whitney with a tiger faint kick from the ring post taking the opportunity to cheer, get a cheer from her fans and here's the cover rope break Riley grasping the rope and uh, forcing a break off of the ping no doubt about it that might have been it Riley has been eating a lot of damage hooking up here's the suplex wait a minute it's Selena going for a yeah, she is another suplex they're not le letting go just yet going for a triple suplex Aviva Caitlin going for the triple Irish curse again this time on Whitney that, that's gonna be breaking your back no doubt about it here's the cover Selena coming after fails to connect with Riley but doesn't matter Caitlin O'Neill takes the victory very great victory for this pair This definitely sends some message to the uh, veterans of the Brawl Masters. Not to let your guard down. These two could very well become the next dominating ones. Next up, we have the handicap match. One on two tornado match between Anna Cross, Isabella Garcia, and Sweet Marie. The following contest is a tornado tag handicap match. Making her way to the ring from Cologne, Germany. Oh, I was finally able to catch Anna, Anna and get a bit of an intel why she went and attacked Gloria that night and follow, following that up attacked Sweet Marie and apparently it, it, she was on a vision quest following a vision or rather a prophecy well not a prophecy what did, what did she call that again? She was under guidance to go after those she felt for disrespect thing the most disrespecting on the series and uh, according to her the most disre disrespectful ones were being Sweet Marie and Gloria Garcia due to their uh, good positive attitude even though this series is all about fighting calling them misguided and in need of uh, some lecturing showing the error of their ways and she was proud. She was proud to explain that to me. And she's just as proud to go go into this match. She was happy to get get a two versus one match. She's looking forward to this one, and I don't know if that's supposed to be scary or not. It's Isabella Garcia looking to get a bit of payback for, for Anna Cross after what she did to her sister. Take it. Uh, yeah, that's just about it. Since Gloria cannot be here tonight, Isabella is stepping in and taking her place. But pretty sure Isabella is just as happy to be here. Showing, showing the world that no one messes with her sister. Sweet Marie! This 
sweet Marie, back at it again. Taking a little break, but now ba back in the Pro Masters. No doubt about it, feel that pumped up to, for this match. She's the number one uh, favorite, the number one fan favorite at least. Always looking for a good time, but tonight it's all about revenge. And here we go, Anna Cross in a very perilous situation. Well, looks like this is gonna be a 2 or 2 match as apparently Isabella is going after the referee. Not sure what that is about. But yeah, we have Anna Cross going up against Sweet Marie and Isabella Garcia who are looking to get a bit of payback after what Anna did to Gloria Garcia. Looks like the match is already off. Yeah, exactly. What? I mean, yeah, I get it. Isabella attacking the referee, but no, that's not how we're gonna end this rematch immediately. A two -on -one handicap match. This match is not gonna be ending just like that. I know that about it. Anna is not satisfied, and neither are Isabella or Sweet Marie. They're looking for a bit of payback, and that's definitely what they're gonna be getting tonight. Brought down by Isabella with an arm ringer. Now meeting the kicks there. Anna definitely has her work cut out for her, but she, going into this match, she was extremely confident, claiming that she could take on both the brawlers at the same time. Looks like there's a bit of a bit of a problem as both 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 Marie and Isabella want to take on Anna at the same time, but oh, there's only so much, and uh, there's only so much that can be dished out there. Anna being caught off guard and gets the kick. Anna getting a reversal in, but not here Sweet Marie coming in to intervene, being tracked around. Marie set up onto the rope. In a match like this, Byron a hair pull slam there by Isabella dropping down. No, only a two count there. The immense advantage that Marie and Isabella have is it's nothing sort of well. It's just that it's just an immense advantage, and um, it's quite possible Anna has just simply been more than she can chew here being tossed around with a hair whip there now Marie looking up the legs and elbows straight to the top of the head there lining up no again looking up and another elbow no doubt about it these two are absolutely loving this opportunity Isabella just taking in the moment enjoying seeing Anna suffer there gets a kick in but Anna has to worry about Maria Svel who's setting up for a pop-up Hurricane Rana. An leg drop to follow that one up. A nice high kick there. Anna definitely has the size advantage, but so far she's play, fully playing into whatever attacks Isabella and Maria are throwing at her. A nice running drop kick there by Isabella. There's Marie just wiping with the team, uh, with, and now uh, both, both just getting the, meeting the heads of each other as Anna is able to get a reversal in, dropping Isabella down. But here's Marie tracking Anna, trying to track her at least, but unable to get her to a suitable position. It seems like Isabella back at it again, going for a dropping Anna down. No leg caught there. Dropped down with a dragon screw. And now Anna dropped down with a high kick there. Straight to the face. Rolls out of the way and likes looks like nope. Anna going for a snap suplex. Marie getting Anna back up there. Going for a few solid high kicks there. No, gets reversed. Anna with a kick, another one to the straight to the torso. The arm ringer set up for a Russian leg sweep. Anna is down. And here we go. The jawbreaker counter. Isabella 
eating it up. It's a very hard to say. It's amazing that Anna is still in this matchup. Even though she's eating up attacks from both, uh, both, both of her opponents at the same time. Lifting Anna up into the top turnbuckle there. Gets the boot. Marie unable to finish the deal here. And there we go. A sit-out jawbreaker dropping Anna down. Isabella getting, getting into the action now. Pulling on the leg and going for another way now. A few solid kicks there. Anna being picked up and now eating attacks from both directions a nice backbreaker there by Isabella and Electro follow, followed up by Marie Marie climbing to the top rope no doubt about it looking to finish this and there she goes completely misses with the shooting star Anna getting back up bringing Isabella down with a hip toss and Electro following that up Isabella getting out of the ring and now it's just her and Marie Anna has got at the better of the situation and a countdown has started. Isabella at the danger of being counted out of this competition. And that's gonna result in a team loss. Marie going for a jawbreaker, Isabella coming too, and Anna going for another jawbreaker. Marie dropping Anna down. We, we have a four count, Isabella finally getting back inside the ring. That might definitely be a good opportunity for Anna to drop to get a victory here. If she's able to get both the competitors outside the ring and just keep them there. Looks like Marie, no, Marie and Isabella again meeting their heads as Anna was fully prepared for whatever attack they were uh, planning on doing. Brought down with a running bulldog. And here's the cover. One, two. No, kicks out. Anna kicks out. Looks like both Marie and Isabella not not believing. They would have figured that Anna would have dropped down, and so would have I. But no, Anna is still in this matchup. Brought down by Isabella, but no, Anna catching the leg there. I'm now going after Marie, going for a spear. Marie is down. It looks like she's out as well. Isabella dropping Anna down with a leg sweep there, now stomping on the leg. No, stomping on every single part of her body. Very ruthless stomps there, and here's the cover. One, two, no, kicks out, still kicks out. How is Anna still in this fight? It, it, it's absolutely unbelievable. Isabella climbing to the top turnbuckle and from there elbow straight to the back. Marie getting back inside the ring as well. And Anna again ha has to meet both brawlers at the same time. A hair whip by Isabella dropping Anna down. Anna getting the leg there dropping Isabella down and now going after Marie. Meets the uppercut there and hooking up Isabella going for a suplex. A very solid technique there, coming from behind and brought down with a suplex to a power bomb. Isabella hooking Anna up and brought down with a, a suplex of her own. Marie climbing to the top rope and she's gonna fly a shooting star hooking up the leg. Here's the cover. Two and three. Well, justice has been served according to Marie and Isabella here. No doubt about it, Anna is gonna be uh, after reconsidering her stance for these two.
makes up the highly anticipated matchup between Carl De Jarl and Wolf Anderson in a no holds barred match. Absolute unit of a brawler. I mean, just look at that body. Chiseled from the Mount Olympus itself. A gift from the gods. And following that up, immense amount of strength. Dropping any warrior foolish enough to stand up to him. Wolf Anderson here to challenge Carl yet again and tonight about to settle it once and for all always been disgruntled about the Carls uh, coming as the top go and even though it seemed like last time they had it all cleared out Wolf still cannot bring himself to fall under the rule of the Jarl I wonder what what was Wolf considering uh, of Brutus after he won the Grand Master title. Oh well, we'll never know that now. Anything goes in this and here we go. The War Raiders are back inside the ring, and again they're fighting each other. Carl the Jarl and Wolf Anderson, a pair that was the, the most promising attack team in the men's division, but alas they threw it all away just because of their infighting. Well thanks to that the brothers Hunter, the Hunter brothers were able to get the Martial Arts Alliance Championship, but no doubt about it, had the War Raiders stick it out together, they would be the champions right now. I know that about it, that has also been grinding their gears uh, in these last few weeks. Wolf keeping the Jarl uh, under control only to get a slap for that one. And now Carl with the Northern Light Suplex. No, he's gonna continue with another one and here's the bridge. No, he lets it go. Lifting up and a nasty forearm straight to the head there. Wolf now meeting meeting the elbow. Jarl getting up on the top rope and he's gonna fly a frog splash. A very impressive flight there and a standing moonsault. No, another one fails as Wolf is able to get his knees up right right before the connection. Now going for a li little bit of a no. Very very psych out. Getting the forearm straight to the back of the head. Carl lifting Wolf up and throwing Wolf outside the ring and they're gonna be fighting it out in the ring. Remember, as the, uh, th this is no holds barred, there are no disqualifications. So this fight can continue on ringside for as long as it needs to. Wolf being thrown into the steel steps there. Carl picking him up and now punching. Misses the last one but doesn't stop. Looks like Carl, what is he doing? He's just standing there. No, he's getting back inside. Wolf, look a bit dazed, stunned into that barricade, stunned against the barricade. No doubt about it, that's the only thing keeping him up currently. Looks like he's a bit exhausted. Jarl, no, what? 
What, what was that? I'm confused. Yarrow being thrown against the barricade there by Wolf. Wolf back inside the ring and Carl coming in back, back as well. Fully prepared for Wolf's attack. Misses, misses completely on that jump attack. Wolf getting the upper hand here, turning Yarrow around, racking up the leg and going for a clothesline. And here's the cover. Heck, leg hooked up. No, gets the shoulder up. The fight is going to continue on. Lift it up. And Wolf now tossing Jarl onto the ropes. Misses with the punch there. Gets the second one. Doesn't get the third. No. Very nice. Gets countered with the third one. But returns the favor with an insecurity. Yeah, catching the leg. Uh, dropping Wolf down with a dragon screw. Another standing shooting star by uh, Carl the Jarl. Impressive flight ability, another standing shooting star. Carl just showing uh, incredible athleticism here against Wolf. Catching his opponent and now being carried in a shoulder carry and ooh! Face first onto the apron, that's gonna hurt. Wolf now tossed against the steel barricade. And Carl getting back inside the ring, challenging the wall, show, showing no respect to his teammate at all. Gets back outside, and it's gonna be fighting. Uh, the fight is gonna continue on the ringside here. Gets the gets hit. Another one, a big boot straight to the torso there. Wolf eating every single attack up, showing no, no, finally able to get a reversal in. But is he able to, he's get, get in, catching the leg there, dropping down, twisting and brought down with an ankle crusher. Ooh, what a slap. And now a kick, and another one, but fa fails to connect. Set up and hooked up for a DDT. Carl getting out of the way and drops Wolf down with a big boot. That's showing your authority. Jarl, Carl now getting back inside the ring once again and Wolf, challenging Wolf to join him. Carl getting the advantage and there we go. The Northern Lights suplex. Here's the cover. Two and no, right before three. Wolf is able to get the shoulder up. That was really close for Wolf. Uh, no doubt about it, one hundred of a second away from a free count. Wolf now throwing Jarl against the referee there and onto the corner, setting him up for a no doubt about it, a big move, throwing Carl into the upper corner and going for a running spear. But he's not finished yet, he's going for a Northern Light suplex. Here's the cover. One, two, no, Carl the Earl still in this fight. That's gonna continue here, but for how much longer? Both of these uh, superstars at the end of their robes. Brought down with a clothesline, and here's the cover again. Two, three. Wolf Anderson has done it. He has done it. Finally getting a victory over Carl the Earl. Everyone thought Carl the Earl was gonna win, but Wolf was just that much better tonight. Next up, a triple threat match between Caleb Flash, Captain Cooper, and Dr. Edwards. Pounds, Caleb Flash. This 
It's been a good while, while uh, since Caleb has uh, gotten any respect from the audience. No doubt about it, they're still a bit salty about Caleb's attacks on Eraser. He's got his work cut out if he wants to enjoy the adoration of fans again. Captain Cooper, always standing up for his friends and relying on his teammates, well, relying on his teammates, and paying back his dues, a real respectful competitor. I mean, they got a bit of a backseat during the second season now, but still a very solid brawler. Dr. Edwards here, I cannot help but to fear, every time I he hear the phrase the doctor is in, I get the sense of dread, the sense that I need to get out of here as soon as possible, because Dr. Edwards is not the kind of doctor you want to be having uh, visiting you, a man who's fascinated by torment and pain, and taking the human body to the extreme, and tonight looks like he has a good good two good very good subjects to test out his new theories on how to bring torment to them doesn't matter where or when he's competing this guy just wants to fight and he's about to get one And here we go, the triple threat match is starting off here. We have Caleb Flash, Captain Cooper and Dr. Edwards all going after each other. Cooper taking control of the situation right from the start there. Gets dropped, gets a headbutt by Dr. Edwards who's lifting him up. Looking like setting up for an Alabama slam. Dr. Edwards now going after Caleb, but Caleb was just, just a bit too much fast for him. Getting the first attack there and dropping Dr. Down now going for the heel hook, twisting on that ankle. Caleb now going after Captain Cooper and set down and looks like, yeah, a nice solid soccer kick straight to the back. Cooper catching the leg and going for the dragon screw. Edwards just looking for an opportunity to strike here. Uh, he's about to get one. There we go. A knee straight to the gut there, uh, followed by a kick. And now lifting Captain Cooper up. No, Cooper escaping and going for an inverted DDT. And followed up by Caleb going for a springboard moonsault. Kick there. Caleb kicking straight to the torso there. And now dropping, dropping his 
spiking helmet straight to the face of Captain Cooper. A few more punches to follow that one up. Set up and here's the drop kick. Captain Cooper now in a very precarious situation as Caleb sets up for a submission maneuver here. The colossal clutch but lets it go immediately. No doubt about it. Uh, those few kicks from David was enough to break it off. Going after now Dr. Edwards, but instead gets lifted up into a farm as Gary and dropped down onto the, the top turn back on face first. Dr. Edwards now to stomping straight to the chest there. Mounting up and going for a few solid punches there and ooh, a nasty kick to finish that off. Cooper, Captain Cooper going after Dr. Ed, but dropping him down with a solid punch they got. Set up on the middle rope there, looking for a perfect opportunity. Here it is, double leg handle connecting straight to the top of the head of the good doctor, who's been now thrown to the corner there. And here's Cooper coming in behind him. Here's the monkey flip, and now climbing and a springboard cross body. The classic Captain Cooper move. Going after Caleb now, sending him up into the corner. And what's we gonna see here? Turning around and lifting Caleb up onto the top turnbuckle on the other way around. And there we go, the captain swoop. But is is this enough? He's gonna go for the cover. Leg hooked up, but Edwards breaking it off immediately, even before one count. Edwards with uh, side, forearms, elbows, and a clothesline, dropping Captain Cooper down. Trying to roll to safety, but there's no escaping the good doctor there. Catching the leg, no, catching the neck with, oh, a very beautiful monster flex there. Caleb getting doctor hitting the leg while landing with the drop kick, but unfortunately doctor is able to get the trap squeeze on Caleb who who yeah there he goes sits down and out of it hooking up the leg and no Cooper coming in to save the match who's immediately lifted up and no doubt about it brought down with an Alabama slam a kick to the a kick to the back there uh, look like we have a waist lock and brought down now hooking up Caleb lifted up and brought down with a court buster oh I inverted two flex I mean misses well does it miss but gets countered Caleb now setting up and brought down with a sunset flip power bomb and here's the cover no only a one count Dr. Edwards still 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 fully in this matchup as he's been in complete control Cooper now coming in with a stranglehold and Caleb taking the opportunity to, to wow the crowd. Unfortunately gets a knee for that from the good captain. Or the bad captain, depends how you see him. Now looks like a bit of team, teaming up here against Caleb. No, Caleb escaping, going for a DDT against the doctor. And now Mrs. Cooper taking take a sidestep there. Gets a kick in and brought down with a Hurricane Rana. Caleb climbing to the top rope and he's gonna fly a double storm straight to the gut there. Breaking off the pin there, Dr. Edwards. Not about to let this let this happen yet. Doctor getting out of the ring after being hit with a flapjack. And here's Caleb running, the running knee lift straight to the face. But he's not done yet. Caleb on the top rope now and he's gonna again double stop, but misses this time. Lifting Ke Captain Cooper up into the and scary and dropping throat first into the top row. Dr. Edwards is back. And no doubt about it, looking for opportunity to end this, it seems like. They caught the left arm there. Caleb still. Caleb is starting to take control of the match as he's br bringing down both Captain and Doctor. Tar targeting the arm there and now standing moonsault. Captain Cooper in the corner, a foolish position as Caleb reaches the... No, he lets it go, huh? What, what was that about? 
Go Cooper escaping from the fireman's carry and I rake there and now Cracklin looks like Edwards holding Caleb down and Cooper going for a few knife edge jobs against the uh, helpless Caleb looks like we're gonna no being set up into the corner by the doctor there another edge job another one that torso being targeted chest and torso being targeted now by both Dr. Edwards and Caleb, uh, Captain Cooper. Edwards now going after Cooper and uh, looks like double underhook brought down with a suplex. Cooper rolling to safety there, look, uh, taking the opportunity. And what, what is Edwards up to lifting Caleb up? And here's the backbreaker, but he's not done yet. Still carrying around another backbreaker. Devastating and looks like yeah, there we go He's about to get another patient down Caleb brought down with the trap squeeze. He's down and out of it and Dr. Edwards looks like it could be getting an easy pinfall victory here No, 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 what? Surely that was three. Come on Tossing Captain Cooper around and looks like Edwards looking for opportunity to finish this off with Cooper instead of Caleb. Caleb getting getting back up. Very impressive that Caleb was able to fight out of that one. Cooper set up on the ropes and and Edwards dropped down with a hurricane Rana. This is a perfect opportunity for Caleb to finish things off, throwing Cooper outside the ring. And where is Caleb? He's what is he? considering he, no he's not gonna it no way he's gonna suicide dive tossing tossing captain cooper against the steel barricade there that was really nuts that could have that could have seriously injured either of them every single brawler currently outside the ring there Dr. Edwards coming in and now Caleb being double deep by both the doctor and the captain. Caleb thrown inside the ring and uh, Dr. Edwards thrown against the apron by Captain Cooper. Going for it, stopping the leg there and now Captain Cooper back inside the ring and looks like he's gonna be, yeah, the captain's hook. The captain's hook is being applied but Dr. Edwards breaks it off. He's gonna go for the cover instead but again Edwards breaking it off. I don't know what. Cooper is thinking here, he's not taking care of the business, setting up Edwards into the corner, here's the monkey flip again, and he's gonna go for the springboard cross body, brought down, legs hooked up, cover, two, no, St still fights it all, the Edwards still in this matchup, Caleb looks up completely out of it at this point, Ugh, that was a mouthful. Edwards escaping whatever Cooper had and there we go the trap squeeze again trying to say, set his opponent down but Cooper looks to be fighting it no does it look like yeah he's, he's he's out he's out and here's the cover Caleb coming in to break it off though and brought down with a gut buster Edwards currently in the lead here a forearm and but Caleb goes for the drop kick Edwards getting out, out outside the ring there and here's the cover by Caleb going after Cooper two no kicks out Cooper still in this fight still has energy left it, very impressive very impressive by all these brawlers how, how, how do they have any energy left is beyond me Caleb on the middle rope and double stomp straight to the chest there middle rope top rope two here's the cover and Caleb flash picks a victory oh oh wow just wow Great victory, no doubt about it, but a great performance, but every single one, 
in fact so great that everyone is gonna be getting a bonus point for this match. Next up, we have the Women's Pro Wrestling Championship, as the previous champion Martha Baker is to reclaim her title from her teammate Kathy Gardner. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Women's Pure Wrestling Championship. Wait a minute, you're telling me this is this here is Martha Baker? Wow, this this had a quite, quite a transformation from the last time we saw her. Ditching out the granny outfit and uh, going to a lot more a lot more well I don't know how to describe this. Well, if I were to describe this, I, I suppose Marfa is here to bring us back into the bubble the era. Looks to be in the best shape ever, ready to compete for that title. This promises to be interesting. Well, glad to see that Gaffy uh, is still Gaffy. As a reminder, the title is on the line here in this match, and the champ is certainly going to have an uphill battle, that's for sure. champion ready to defend her title. Introducing the challenger from Birmingham, England, Mrs. And introducing the champion from no place in particular, she's the women's pure wrestling champion, Shy Girl, Kathy Gardner. You win this title, you are primed for big things. And here we go, another championship match fueled by yeah, rivalry I mean, here, as we have the former teammates, Martha Baker and Gaffy Gardner, and what started this, uh, Gaffy Gardner was able to get the Pure Wrestling Championship belt from Martha Baker, and Martha felt betrayed from that, thinking that she had no right to come after the championship that she had fought so hard for. Instead, she af afterwards uh, she came after Kathy Gardner, attacking her from behind. But Kathy was fully prepared for that attack, able to fight Martha off eventually. And it looks like 
Marfa has completely reinvented herself, going for a completely new style and noted about it, a few new fighting techniques as well. Marfa and Caffey both are top tier brawlers. They, they, um, Caffey was one of the most dominating women in season one. Marfa has been one of the most dominating one in season two, and their tag team has been absolutely flawless. But right now, these two teammates have gone to war with the pure wrestling championship on the line. And neither of them are willing to lose this one. Currently, Gaffey Gartner taking lead in the situation here. Going for a kick there, but caught by Marfa holding her guard up. Does it help as Gaffey goes for the arm breaker on the shoulder? Now, the headlock applied and punched straight to the face. Gaffey with a dominating stomp there and a hair pull mat slam. Here's the cover. One, two, Marfa kicks out. The, the fight is way, way too soon to end this one. The arm trapped and now with the arm breaker. And a drop kick straight to the back of the head. Another stomp, double stomp right on the arm there. As the challenger Marfa is completely helpless so it seems. Brought down with a snapmare and looks like, yep, a rolling neck snap. Gaffey getting up on the top turnbuckle there. And she's gonna fly a double stomp. Here's the cover. One, two, three, no, gets the shoulder up. Real, real, real close there for Marfa. And looks like Gaffey is still about to finish it off with the split leg drop. And here's the cover again. No, tossing, tossing Gaffey off right before three. And you can see the frustration on her face. She's not happy about another rolling neck snap. Marfa eating every single attack up, but still in this fight, I cannot believe. Uh, is, is it just pure strength of will? Here she came in with a uh, very, very uh, flair, 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 very phrase and new outlook, and she's she's just being brought down by her partner Kathy. Here's the cover again. No. Gets again the shoulder up. She, she, she's still in this fight. She's not about to give up. At least it looks like. But Gaffy is not done with her. We've seen Gaffy unleash her nerd rage. Like there, there is no stopping her. She's completely relentless when in a fight. And here's a waist lock takedown by Marfa. She's finally able to get a hit back in against Gaffy. Hooking up, double underhook and brought down. No, Caffey able to recover from that with an arm track. Very expertly done. Brought down, Marfa catching the leg there. And now brought down with a whippersnapper. Hooking up the leg, Caffey is down. Two, no, kicks out, kicks out. Fight is gonna continue on. Marfa now tracking Caffey more into our central position of the ring. Not about it, wanting to get her out of the ropes and looks like she's hooking up for a submission maneuver here. Try try the stump puller locked in, but doesn't look like Caffey is in any problem at all. Fighting fighting off fighting off the submission hold there. And the fight is gonna continue. Hooked up, brought down with a suplex. Marfa still keeping on with the pressure here. Going for a few stomps there, lined up, a sucker kick straight to the back there, and now targeting the leg there, and now punching straight to the kneecap. Uh, very dominating walk, walk over there, showing Caffey who's the boss there. Caffey with a dragon screw reversal, and she goes for a double stomp, jumping attack herself, and another one. No doubt about it, a move she picked up from Snow Princess Yuri from their previous match. Dragging Marfa to the center, or yeah, there she goes, a bit closer to the center. And there we go, the split leg drop. 
and Kaffi about to finish this off the championship it's not going anywhere no again fighting it off how Marfa still in this matchup rolling out of the way and gets a low drop kick straight to the knee there Marfa going for the cover two no fights off Kaffi is still in this fight getting back up completely unfazed by that kick but brought down with a whippersnapper once more and Marfa looking for a submission victory here what what better way to go for that a submission looks like Kaffi is in absolute pain Marfa tried to break the leg no she lets it go stomping the leg there again looking up I brought down with a suplex there's the cover leg hooked up again two three and Marfa Baker picks up a victory and the championship returns to her and here's another peek at the moves he saw in that match victory a well earned one that's definitely tr true but you're gonna wonder what this does for the tag team how much this is gonna strain the relations Next up, we have the men's extreme fighting championship match as Balosek the Kremlin and Flyboy challenge Mark Hunter in a ladder match. Balosic the Kremlin, a challenger for the Extreme Fighting Championship, a very unrelenting character, and always taking the fight one step uh, uh, harder than uh, what most brawlers would take it. mostly uh, teaming up with his uh, tag team partner Tornado Torres but tonight he'll be fighting as an individual a solitary competitor uh, looking to steal the show while fighting for the extreme fighting championship Weighing in at 216 pounds, he is the 
the champion here, Mark Hunter. The number one pro, uh, well not number one for all, number two for all are currently in the series. Um, what man who has completely reinvested himself during the later half of this second season, not only winning the martial arts alliance, but the extreme fighting championship as well. He's gonna have a hard time defending it from two challengers though. It's gonna be up to uh, have to stay on his toes for this one. And here we go, a triple threat ladder match. For the Extreme Fighting Championship, and can you name a better rule stipulation for the Extreme Fighting than a ladder match? Here we have the challenger, Balosek the Kremlin and Flyboy against the champion, Mark Hunter. Mark Hunter immediately brought down by Flyboy, and now Flyboy being brought down by Balosek. Balosek escaping the ring to get the ladder. And Mark looks like he's about he's to do the same. To the no, he's just standing there. Heard about it, the strategizing right. a bit. Getting immediately back. Snapmare Snap onto the ladder. Down. And a single leg drop by Balosek against Flyboy. Going after Mark now, but unfortunately Mark lifting Balosek up into a, a power bomb. No one alley oop instead. And now targeting in the leg there. And now Flyboy going after Mark Hunter there, dropped down and a nice solid spin kick straight to the face. Mark rolling to safety and it's only Flyboy and Balosek inside the ring. Flyboy with a shooting star, standing shooting star, but let's... Balosek dropping Flyboy down and looks like he's not finished yet, he's hooking up. Impressive feat of strength and a stalling suplex. Some Looks like Mark is gonna be getting the same treatment. No, a brain buster instead of Mark. Selectively targeting backs and heads on either opponent. Oh, nasty arm snap there. Mark misses with a springboard. And now Balosek with the ladder dropping Mark down, sm smacking the steel ladder straight to the head there. And a double face, double knee face breaker against Flyboy. Mark throwing Balosek into the corner, a strong soccer kick, another one. Balosek has no way out of this one. Now the arm trapped and brought the immense amount of pain. Mark now climbing to the la top of the ladder, no climbing to the bottom. Balosek dropping hold of Mark and throwing him to the corner as he's now starting to make his ascension. Grabbing the belt there, but he's gonna unhook it first before he's claimed the champion. Now getting smacked by Mark, but Mark is being interrupted by Flyboy. No, no idea what's going on here. Flyboy going after Mark, and Balosek has free reign with the belt. No, no, no one to stop him. Flyboy going after the ladder, and Balosek brought down with a spine buster. Could have been a very strategic move, let, let Balosek untangle the belt so Flyboy can come in and get it for himself. Smacking Balosek with the ladder and now setting up perfectly right in the middle of it. Climbing to the top and now going after the belt himself. But here's Balosek climbing up as well. It looks like we're gonna have a fight right on top of that ladder. Gets a forearm and brought down. Balosek is brought down but here's Smart ready to fight next. Gets the forearm himself as well, and Balosek, no, Balosek, Flyboy, gets a smack across his head. Another one by Mark, uh, exchanging blows at the top of the ladder, one after another, trying to drop each other down. Going back and forth now currently, as neither of the brothers seem to be getting the advantage here over the other. Looks like ba Flyboy lifting Mark up into a backpack carry, and brought down. Well, Mark, Mark is down, Flyboy is still still in this, the champion is down, Balosek is getting there. Looks like Flyboy about to fly, a frog splash, all the way from the top of the ladder. 
And now Balosek going after the belt again. But here's Flyboy jumping and striking straight to the legs. Preventing Balosek from being able to concentrate. Drop down from the top of the ladder. And Flyboy now in clear lead. Let's see what's brought lifted up into a shoulder carry. Carrying Balosek around. No, Balosek going for an inverted DDD. Meanwhile, the champion Mark Hunter again after the belt. Well, for the first time after the belt. The ladder is out, but Mark is still holding on to the belt. You just gotta hold on and get the belt down from there, but there's no way down. Well, no safe way down. Balosek with a wicked step sister on Flyboy. Completely stunned now, never mind. Lifted back up and now tossed into the corner. Looks like he's gonna want to end this. Oh no. The deadly nightshade face first into the middle turnbuckle. Mark being thrown outside the ring. A Balosek now setting up the ladder straight in the middle of the ring. What, what's he gonna do here? He's gonna he's gonna get to the top of there and looks like he's gonna be going after the belt again. But Mark going after the ladder. Yep, there we go. There it goes. And meanwhile, go, now going after Flyboy, meanwhile, ba Balosek still hanging on to the belt, trying to unhook it, no doubt about it. No, unable to get it before his arm failed him. Mark with a drop kick against Flyboy, who's now rolling away. Uh, Balosek is down, trying to recover. Mark setting up the ladder into the middle of the ring. No idea, was dropping Balosek down, who was trying to climb up. And Mark now climbing the ladder. There he goes. But is he gonna jump or is he gonna... No, he's gonna jump. No way. From the top, elbow drop straight to the back. But he's not done yet. He's climbing to the top turnbuckle. Nope. He goes down. Okay, well, that was anticlimactic. Mark back on the top. And now going after the belt again. He's going to untangle it. The champion is gonna retain. No, Flyboy coming in from behind, interrupting Mark, and what, what, what's happening with the belt? I'm not, not sure what that was about. Mark is down, Balosek is down as the ladder is brought down by Flyboy. Mark getting the ladder again. I have no idea what the fuck happened to the belt just there, but it's still up there. Mark is escape, e exiting the ring there. Flyboy getting on the top turnbuckle, and from there a shooting star. Balosek, Balosek is done, he's, he's done down and out of it, Flyboy setting up the ladder in a very weird position, Mark going for a springboard neck breaker, Balosek getting back up and so is Flyboy, the ladder in a really weird position, there's no way you can reach the belt from there. Mark has been thrown out, and now Balosek going for a sling blade and a basement drop kick on Flyboy. Flyboy gets a kick in, Balosek gets a kick in. These two are at complete war. Now Mark Hunter coming in, bringing down Balosek with a snapmare, lifting him back up. Gets a counter, gets a leg caught and brought down Balosek, dropping Mark Hunter down. A kick there, float over, followed by a DDT. Flyboy climbing to the top of the ladder. Looks like the belt is in a good position right now. And that ladder position might actually work. Balosek, ooh, a nasty uh, uh, double mushroom, leaping mushroom stomp. Right on the Flyboy. Balosek now going after Mark with the sling blade. Flyboy is out and outside the ring as well. A backbreaker there and brought down with the elbow. Balosek now climbing to the top of the ladder. And oh no, he's seriously thinking about jumping from the top of the ladder. No way, don't do it. Mark trapping. No, a tra Oh, nasty. Very nasty. A missile drop kick from the top of the ladder straight to the head of Mark Hunter, the drop kick master. Mark rolling to safety, able to get set up Balosek into the corner, looking a bit stunned there. And now a ladder straight to the back. Balosek getting up. 
but Mark is not done yet. Well, neither is Balosek. Meanwhile, Flyboy and Balosek both climbing to the top. And Mark now looking for an opportunity or just taking a moment to rest, it seems. Balosek cooking up Flyboy. No, no way. He's no way. A suplex from the top of the ladder. That That's just completely insane. Flyboy is down. And Balosek is still in this. Mark with a ladder outside the ring. We have Balosek getting the original ladder set up. In a pretty good position there. Mark climbing to the top there. And waiting for Balosek to get there. No, he's going after the belt. Getting the piece straight to the gut there. Try now going back and forth. With exchanging clothes on top of the ladder. Very precarious position. No, another one. No, Mark with a reversal. Smacking the head straight on the ladder and looks like Mark is gonna go for a twist of pay from the top of the ladder both, both challengers are down the champion is the only one left up there's no way Mark is not done yet he's not quite gonna go after the belt he's gonna jump a leg drop from the top of the ladder a very interesting decision there by Mark who had a completely free reign to get the belt Looks like he's gonna go after the belt again. But Flyboy is right behind him, smacking him straight to the leg there. No, and the belt is again being real wobbly. Looks like, oh no, Flyboy set up with a power bomb. Mark is down and he's out. The champions it might be changing hands right here and right now. Flyboy is picking up Balosek, wanting to end this one right here. Set up in the corner, tossed down, and but it's Flyboy up to going for a split leg draw, a uh, split leg moonsault. Balosek is down, Mark Hunter is down, Flyboy climbing up to the top, and looks like he's gonna go for the championship title. And there's no, no way he's not gonna be able to get this one, unhooking the title. Then he, he, here he goes, Flyboy, we have a new champion, Flyboy gets the belt and wins the match. Taking another look here, you can see how the ladder just introduces a whole other element. We're going to be continuing on with the championship matches. Next one, we have the no-holds-barred match for the men's Grandmaster title. Big Ham versus current champion Pucer Pedro. There's the challenger of tonight, Big Ham, Hammond Nelson, the poster child of Brawl Masters, looking to reclaim his title after he lost, after he lost it to Brutus the Barbarian, and uh, now looking, looks like he has an excellent opportunity as Butzer Perko is the current title holder. Having won it run just recently, Hoping to capitalize on the situ uh, on the fact that Pedro might not have fully recovered from the previous match.
here's the defending champion, the Grandmaster of Brawlers, Butcher Pedro. A uh, fighter who's always willing to take things to extreme and who displays an immense amount of strength. Putin Pedro and Big Ham have been uh, going head to head for a good while now. And what better incentive for this match than the Grandmaster title? But at the end of the day, let's face it, the title is only secondary here. This is all about these two settling their debts. Introducing the challenger from the United States of America, weighing in at 416 pounds, Big Ham, Hammond Nelson. And introducing the champion from Naples, Italy, weighing in at 243 pounds, he is the You can see it in the eyes of each individual. Only razor sharp focus when this much is on the line. Here we go, starting off what could be an instant classic in the Pro Masters history. We have Big Ham and Pucher Pedro fighting it out for the men's Grandmaster title. Looks like Big Ham is starting it nice and heavy, keeping Pedro at bay, dodging the attacks and stunning him into the corner now, going for a running clothesline. Pedro with no way out of that one. Now trapping the arm there and stomping straight on the hand. Very nasty there. And looks like he's not done yet. He's gonna be trying to target that one point. Trying to break the arm or at least softening it up plenty enough so Petro will not have enough strength to lift ha ham up. Catching the leg there. Petro going for a dragon screw reversal. And here we go, a small package victory by uh, Big Ham. No, only a one count. Very, very great, great attempt there, there by the challenger, but unfortunately not enough. Mounting Pedro now and using forearm as a clubbing weapon. Very, very heavy hits there. Big Ham now lifting, puts her Pedro up. No, Pedro with an elbow straight to the core. So again, Big Ham just tossing the champion aside, thrown into the corner again. And uh, looks like, no, Pedro gets a kick in, stunning Ham and brought down with an STO. Looks like, yeah, Pedro now mounting Big Ham and going for all four arm smashes of his own. Very, very strong hits there. And now punching the challenger straight into the mouth. And looks like we're gonna see a submission hold here. The arm bar locked in. Twisting on the arm. Very interesting choice there. As I would have figured a different kind of a submission hold might have done more, more of a result here. Unless the uh, purpose was to try to soften Big Ham's arm up. I don't know about it, if you break it long enough, it's not going to be charting up those forearm smashes or those close lines. Again, trapping the uh, arm and now stomping right on the hand. This time on the left one, I mean the right one, and immediately breaks off the pin, even before one count. They come now trapping with a waist lock. No, brought down by Big uh, Pedro. Pedro now hooking Big Ham up and lifted, brought down with a falling cutter. And here's the cover. One, two, 
no kicks out. Challenger is still in this fight. Bigham still still fighting through. Looking to finish it off. There we go. There's the bow. And leg drop. Don't know about it. Puts a better look into end this right here and right now. Cover. No, gets the shoulder up. Big camp still still fighting on. Still has in energy left. And don't expect the champ to start going easy on him now. I've lost count of how many times this match should have ended by now. Thrown into the corner there, set up there perfectly by Putzer Pedro, and now going for, for a few elbow strikes straight on the face. Sam rolling out of safety, unfortunately caught by Pedro, thrown onto the ropes there, and lifted up and on the top rope, and forearm smash straight to the back. Uh, knee, knee lift straight to the face there, Putzer Pedro keeping him down. Kick to the gut, hook up, and a swinging neck breaker. Would have thought he would go for a suplex, but I suppose a neck breaker is a better choice with a, as opponent as big as big ham. A nice solid kick there, now twisting on the arm there. No, brought down. No, we're not brought down, but a forearm smash there. Big Ham started to get control back to his side again, lifting Pedro up and brought down with the snake guys. Again, mount, mounting the champion and going for a few heavy clubs there. Not showing any mercy here. Lifting the champion up and trying to get him stunned. Noted about it, Pedro with our counter. Wrenching the arm and goes for a back heel kick. Ham running at Pedro, unable to get, get the hit in, but now dragging, dragging the champion on, onto the ropes. They're lifting up and looks like Big Ham is setting up. The catapult launching the inverted Alabama slam. Looking, hooking up the leg. Championship on the line. No, Pedro still holds on. Gets the shoulder up. Big Ham can't believe it, but looks like he's gonna, gonna go for another the one. The bully shakes and the moonsault follows. You first get the uh, uh, full moon and then you get the moonsault. There's the, there's the stomping on the arm again, and, well on the hand again. It looks like Big Ham intentionally trying to break the hand here. Now choking, choking on the opponent, lifting Butcher Pedro back up, and now again trying to track him to the ropes there, and looks like he's setting up for another, yeah, there we go, a very helpless position for the champion, inverted Alabama slam yet again, leg hooked up, here's the cover, two, and no, still fights it off, Butcher Pedro not about to give up just yet. And no doubt about it, no about it, frustration will be settling in on Big Ham, which might give Butcher Pedro just enough an opportunity to get the victory here against a distraught opponent. A waist lock and brought down with a power slam. Here's the heel hook now, Big Ham targeted the ankle, they're twisting on it. Nasty, very nasty there. And looks like she's gonna go for it again. Yeah, there's the booty shaking, followed up by the moonsault, but this time Pedro rolling out of the way. Definitely given Pedro the opportunity. Brought down with an STO. And looks like, yeah, he wants to finish this all right. Take a bow and misses with the leg drop. Ham rolling out of the way there. Dragon now again set up on the ropes and looks like he wants it one more time. Uh, the third inverted Alabama slam. There's no way the champion is able to get out of this one. Here we, here we go. Big Ham is the new champion. There we go. It's official. Big Ham gets the Grandmaster title back to himself.
Next up, we have another championship match. This one for the strongest of brawlers. Thunderstorm Andre and Blue Brute locked inside a steel cage. The challenger, Thunderstorm Andre. He previously fought for the Strongest of Brawlers title uh, in a Triple Threat Steel Cage match. It was him, the Blue Brood, and Jackie Jackson. Jackie at the time was the champion. And Blue Brood was able to get the victory tonight. We'll be revisiting that fight, but tonight it's just Thunderstorm Andre and Blue Brood locked inside. We'll see if Andre is able to perform better tonight. Of course, the champion, Blue Brood, the strongest of brawlers and the master bounty hunter, and not to mention the grand champion of the great hunt, Reza Grumirani, the chief bounty hunter, again about to show his dominance in this series. Introducing the challenger from California, weighing in at 238 pounds, the superstar, Thunder Storm Andre. And introducing the champion from out of this world, weighing in at 242 pounds. He is the men's heavyweight champion, Root Hunter. A title coveted by legends and hungry young talent alike. The steel cage has been locked in and the championship match is on the way. Fighting for the strongest of brawlers title tonight. We have Sander Shomantre challenging the current champion, the Blue Brood. Now as per steel cage rules, there are three ways to win here. Either a pinfall, a submission or by escaping the cage. And know that about it, it's gonna be one heck of a fight. Looks like Thunderstorm Andre looking for a quick victory here, starting his climb up 
to the top of the steel cage now. But here's Blue Brute smacking the leg against the cage wall. Targeting the leg again. Andre just holding on with his hands. Jumping down from there. Gets a kick straight to the guard. Another one. And a nice solid combination attack there. Keeping Blue Brute at play. Here's the jokes. So called. A brought down with an STO. The champion currently in a very, very unlikely situation. You would think that he would be able to fight back a bit more than that, but no, he's being kept down by Andre, who's again trying to make his way to the top of the cage and making a good effort at that. Blue Brute getting back up and catching the leg before Andre was able to get a secure enough position to climb to the top. Getting a forearm thrust straight to the back there and now pulling Andre down all the way from the top rope. As the champion now takes the opportunity and starts making his climb up. Andre getting back up to his feet now. And now coming in from behind, smacking the champion's leg right on the wall there. No, champion able to stop Andre's effort there. And trying to climb, still keeps on climbing. Or trying to climb at least. Andre again smashing the leg against the wall using using the, the steel cage as a weapon a very very solid strategy there again blue crew trying to escape the cage by climbing it but nope andre is still still at it blue crew jumping down there gets a kick in and brought down with a ddt andre no doubt about it andre currently leading in this situation and looks like he's charging up charging up the lightning fist is coming and finally connecting. It's been a real long time since the lightning fist has connected. Every single brawler has caught it and dropped Andre down with an arm wrench. But this time, wait, what happened? Blue Brute coming in from behind. What, what was that? Not sure. Andre set up into the corner now and now rapid. Rapid smashes and close line bringing on Trey down. And now Blue Fruit climbing again to the top of the rope, trying to make his escape out of the cage. Trying to find a good position, but here's on Trey smashing the leg against the wall. And no Blue Fruit again stopping on Trey, kicking to the side and trying to climb up. Andre a bit stunned there, but no time to look stunned. You gotta drop the champion down if you want to have any chances of keeping this match going. Blue Brute jumping down and bringing Andre down with a big boot. Landing up the arm and stopping right on it. And now smashing the head right against the ring. There's the headlock and now just rapid fire punch and straight to the head side of the head. No mercy shown here. Lifting Andre back up but Andre a bit, just a bit faster there. Lifting Blue Brood up and looks like dropped right onto the top rope there. Throat first. Blue Brood able to get the upper hand. But literally as he rolls on top of Andre there. As fast as him. And now both competitor, competitors back up. Andre tossing Blue Brood into the corner. Trapping the arm and trying to pull it through the top rope. That's gonna be left hurting. Brought down with a close slide. And Andre now walking in circles. I don't know what that was about. Andre climbing to the top rope and starting to try to make an attempt here to climb to the top. But here's Blue Brooks passing the leg straight against the wall. And another one. No, Andre with a storm. Able to stun the Brute. Blue Brute from momentarily, but doubt it's gonna be enough yeah there we go another smash there to the wall Andre jumping down gets the uppercut and Blue Brute looks like he's setting up is he gonna lift up there he goes a sheer amount of strength here brought down with a jackhammer now mounting the challenger and going for a few heavy punches Ooh, and a stomp to finish it off Blue Brute climbing to the top of the rope now and no doubt about it starting to climb. Trying to climb at least to the top of the top of the gates. Look like there's no challenge at all. Andre completely stunned. 
as Blue Brood has made his way to the top of the gates and now it's just a matter of time before he comes all the way down but here's Andre coming in smashing in the leg but Blue Brood stomping Andre right on the chest and dropped down from the top of the top rope trying to climb again down trying to get a good position trying to secure his leg on the other side of the steel case but no here's Andre smashing the leg and again brought down with a few solid kicks there again try, trying to climb down but Andre climbing back up to the top rope and here he comes and there he goes Smash, smashes the blue fruit right into the leg preventing him from advancing but here, here again the stomps and you would swear that these steel case matches they, they are just all the same like you see all the all the moves just on repeat like there's no variation there to them blue fruit again stomps right to the chest there and Andre is brought down again blue fruit trying to make his way down you, you have to imagine how many times can Andre suffer that being brought down by the ch uh, champion gets a smack in another one blue fruit not able to bring Andre down this time as he's tracking on the leg and bringing the champion down and back inside the steel cage the match is gonna continue on inside the cage but it looks like Andre has had enough and he's starting to climb unfortunate for him he's gonna be meeting the steel cage for that one another slam straight to the wall a blue fruit starting to climb back up to the top definitely could uh, could be the difference maker first slam straight face first in that uh, chain link fence and then brought down looks like the champion is safe home clear from here and there we go he's climbing down Andre can only watch from uh, aside as the champion climbs down and gets the victory These guys feel no love for each other. Here's another look. Well, that head slam and then takedown was definitely, or rather a toss was all the difference maker. It's time to start 13th match of the night and know that about it the most anticipated match of the entire season so far a no holds barred match between Queen Raiden and Christina Van Mortis Here she comes There, with Rain and going for both high flying moves as well as just pure raw power. A very talented brawler, although she could definitely learn how to uh, use those high flying moves better. At least try to connect them. Romania, 
We're staying out here. I'm here, competitor. One who does it. Is it worried about showing her true nature in this show? Much, much less, uh, no worries about weaponizing it either. Absolute powerhouse. And one of the strongest in the entire series, no doubt about it. She has immense amount of strength. And she's able to lift re pretty much anyone she's come across so far. A determined look on her face. She knows how to prove herself in the women's division. Here we go, no holds barred match between Queen Raiden and Christina one more. This a pair that's been able to eclipse completely outside when compared to the number one rivalry of season one, Julia Rose and Magic Maggie. These two have absolutely stolen the show on many occasions, and no doubt about it, this is the highlight of tonight. Christina and Queen have fought it out for many weeks now. And previously, the previous premium show, the Money in the Bank show, Christina was able to completely humiliate Queen. Now, Queen has been able to pick herself up and get a few victories against Christina after that. It looks like she's gonna get a victory here. Never mind Christina getting out of that pinfall as soon as after a one count. But yeah. These two, these two are absolutely, you can only imagine how much uh, hatred they have for each other. Funny to go as this far and still keep on going. Many other brawlers would have given up at this point. Started to focus more on other things instead, but no. These two are still going at it. And tonight it will finally be settled once and for all. Queen now tar uh, stretching on that shoulder. Christina running to safety and it goes for a clothesline, dropping Queen down. Now that about it lifting up and looks like no, Queen able to escape. Now that about it, she was gonna face a tombstone pal driver if she hadn't. Christina countering that and going for a DDT into a cover. Shoulders are down. One. No, kicks out. Queen still fighting this and more impressively still keeping it at a one count. Ooh, nasty elbow straight to the face there and Christina lifting Queen up into a military press. No, Queen was just playing, playing alone, going for an EDT from there. A perfect position to get some leverage there. Queen now circling around and lifted again up into a military press, going for a few presses there and drop down. Queen drop kicking Christina down. And let's see what's the next move gonna hear. A hip attack. Dropping Christina down. No, Queen is down by a lift kick by Christina. Getting her back up there and now tossing her outside. All the way outside. The fight is gonna continue ringside. Remember, because this is a no, a no holds bar, there are no disqualifications, so there are no countdowns as either. Win with a jawbreaker reversal, get some headway there. Now going for a few solid punches and followed by a double knee face breaker. And oh no, looks like Win is getting rid of the table coverings of the other, other announcement table. See. Uh, Let's see if she has any plans on using that table. Yeah, she does. Trying to get uh, Christina into a better position here. Softening her up and keeping her down. Christina getting back up. Gets a knee straight to the gut there. And now, no, misses. And Queen, Queen gets the double axe handle straight to the back there. 
a pants and a slap and Christina stand against the announcement table as his rebound and drop down and the heel who been applied currently nasty targeting the leg there and again looks like yeah Queen is taking it into another uh, one step further very very unfortunate for Queen there Queen brought up with a and brought down with a German suplex uh, Christina brought down with a German suplex and now Queen throwing Christina back inside the ring looks like the announcement table lives to see another day Queen climbing up to the top turnbuckle and from there an elbow drop straight to the back but wait a minute, the lights just went out and Christina is looking for her prey. Here she is right in front of her, set up on the ropes. And know that about it, there's the pants, but no. Queen able to fight her off, throwing her ringside and climbing to the top turnbuckle. She's gonna jump, no doubt about that. An elbow misses as Christina rolls out to safety. Gets, gets a forearm smash straight to the head there. Christina taking control of the situation, lifting Queen up into a military... No! Gets DDD. Queen gets, uh, gets a DDT. Right, right, right there, right now. And Queen is back inside the ring. <laughs> Humiliating Christina. Back, back to ringside where Christina was fully prepared for her. Lifted up into an electric chair and brought down with a drop. Christina now lifting Queen back up catching hold of her and throwing her back inside the ring looks back like Christina is looking for opportunity to end this right right now lifting Queen up there and looks like yep there's the press and there's the bite a, a, a bit of a bit of uh, snack time the snack time is here for Christina Queen able to fight Christina off but know that about it that that was the that sell the deal Christina hooking up the leg Two and no, Queen still in this fight gets a shoulder up. Very, very impressive, but in a very, very dangerous position right now. Queen is gonna have to do a full 180 reversal if she wants to win this one anymore. A nice solid sit out spine buster by Queen now, lifting Christina back up. And now there's the oh, a nasty. Next breaker there. Queen lining up. Christina and there completely misses with the jump. And Christina going after the arm now. There's a stomp. Nope, gets a kick. And brought down. Christina brought down with a heavy slap there. And looks like Queen is about to line up her opponent and charge her fist. The cybernetic fist connecting the Superman punch has connected and here's the cover. Two, three, Queen Raiden finally able to come up, uh, come up at the top. Bringing this match to a close and finishing up this chapter which has captivated the entire audience of the Pro Masters for weeks now. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally arrived to the main event of tonight's payback event. Tonight we have a no holds barred match between Julia Rose and Magic Maggie for the Extreme Fighting Championship.
The following champion versus champion contest is a no holds barred match and is for the Women's Extreme Fighting Championship. The challenger, a much more than that, the Grandmaster of the Brawlers, Julia Rose. I mean, won the Grandmaster title from their previous match when she cast in a Champions Challenge contract. Julia Rose was finally able to humiliate her opponent, Magic Maggie, by claiming the Grandmaster title, a title she has committed ever since season one. But looks like she's not done yet humiliated. She's not complete until Maggie is completely destroyed. And tonight she's going after her second title, the Extreme Fighting Championship. Defending champion, the extreme fighting champion, Magic Maggie. Here we go, guys. The championship is on the line here in this one. And I'll tell you, Cole, the champion has never looked more dominant than right here, right now. Introducing the challenger from deep in the jungle, Julia Rose. And introducing the champion from Brussels, Belgium, she's the women's extreme fighting champion, Magic Maggie. With this championship title in play, you can expect this match to be something special. Ladies and gentlemen, the final match of tonight is starting. The main event has started for the Extreme Fighting Championship. We have the challenger Julia Rose going up against Magic Maggie. And can you imagine a better ending to tonight's uh, payback event than the classical rivalry between Magic Maggie and Julia Rose? These two have been at it ever since season one. Um, and it's been going on and on and on 
Okay. Cooling down a bit during the second season, but still lingering on there. And these two have taken another step into an animosity right after Julia Rose cast in her champion's oh, challenge contract and won the Grandmaster title from Magic Maggie. But she's not done yet. She wants uh, Magic Maggie to be completely humiliated and destroyed and wants to get her second title as well. Hence, this match is happening. But no doubt about it, Magic Maggie is not about to let that happen as she's already going for a Mudalog submission hold here. Looking to finish this one real early. Immense amount of torque, but able to fight it off, able to get out of that one. Julia Rose in this fight still. Breaking up the leg there and now uh, pulling on it as she rolls, ro rolls away. Rose getting up onto the top turn buckle, but brought down back in. No, Maggie unable to get get her down, but catching her and brought down with a power bomb instead. Maggie definitely on top of her game tonight. She already lost one match to Julia previously. She's not about to lose this one as well. And Maggie has definitely been the top dog for the longest time now. Wrenching the arm and locking it behind, but unfortunately the second arm is still free. Julia able to use that to her advantage, lifting Maggie up and going for a shin breaker now. Tossing the arm around and looks like she's lining up for a knee drop straight to the face. Targeting the other arm now, taking her time to pick her opponent apart one by one. Take down and again a rolling neck snap. Now a jumping stomp right right under the arm there. Maggie eating up a lot of damage right now. Again brought down and again rolling neck snap. Evidently trying to soften Maggie as up as much as possible, specifically targeting the arms and legs here. No doubt about it. Trying trying to make sure that the Black Widow or whatever other submission hold uh, Maggie has in store for her will not land successfully. A solid kick there and now looks like... Uh, yep, there we go, a Rose plant. Julia Rose going for the cover. Two. No, Maggie fights it off. Only a two count. Fight is gonna continue on and looks like we have another problem with the lighting. Magic Maggie appearing behind but Julia Rose fully prepared for that one. The referee being a bit distraught. Julia set up into the corner now. A knee to the gut there. It looks like Maggie is again just just using the opportunity to, to make fun of Julia with the same move that she originally used. Maggie able to fight off Julia's uh, control there. Hooking up and no. Julia with a few punches to the stomach fights Maggie off. Maggie from Julia onto the corner there. A knife edge job, another one. That's gonna be damage, be a good amount of damage there. It looks like she's going for another stretch there. There we go. A very interesting way to weaponize both your body as well as the uh, ropes there. Maggie now tracking Julia or lining her up in a better position. Looks like she's about to finish this one off. Uh, no, Julia with a jaw breaker. Unable to seal the deal here. Misses with the kick there. That might cost Maggie a lot. Brought down with a hangman's neck breaker. Julia setting herself up on the middle rope and a knee drops straight to the face. Maggie catching the leg and bringing Julia down with a uh, dragon screw. But here's the surprise spin. Julia Rose coming with a surprise spin. Shoulders down. No, fights it off. Maggie able to break it off right before free. It sits down and looks like Julia is about to take advantage of the situation here. Maggie unable to keep on her legs. And Julia, here comes the black magic. Going for the cover. Hooking up the leg. Here we go. One, two, three. No, gets the shoulder up right before three. Maggie is still in this fight. 
ru rushing at Julia now, Miss completely missing the target and gets the sin breaker for all her trouble. Looks like Julia lining up again for the black magic. Maggie, no, you got you gotta fight. Yeah, there you go, able to get out of that one. Maggie still in this fight. Julia, and there she goes. The Black Widow, the Black Widow hold is applied. Maggie in control, but doesn't look like it's at all facing Julia. She's still in way too much a good situation, picking it off and bringing it with a side slam. Stomping the arm now, and another knee drop straight to the face there. A solid drop kick straight to the back, and now stomping the arm. No, Julia. No, Maggie rolling out of safety. And now a nice, nice DDT there. This is a very dangerous situation now. Maggie now trying to get to the corner, but Julia getting up a bit too hastily for her. Going for a side suplex. A kick straight to the face there, lifting Julia back up. Maggie in control of the situation. Knee first in, uh, well, face first into the knee. And looks like Maggie gonna be setting up. Yeah, there she goes. Using the, those uh, contor body contortionist abilities. Closing in on her opponent slowly but surely. Waiting for the opportunity to strike. There she goes. Julia getting back up but caught by Maggie immediately. And there it is, the sister Abigail connecting. Here's the cover, leg hooked up, two, three, and Magic Maggie retains. Now here's a look at some of the clips that made this street fight so much fun, at least for us. With that, a night full of excitement and drama comes to a close. We are the winners of tonight. Now, reminder to anyone who happened to miss it at the start of the broadcast. As opposed to regular rulings, tonight's rivalry matches will be garnering points uh, to the brawlers. First off, we had the match, championship match between Furious Ford and Cutie by Cook for the Pure Wrestling Championship. After a few good weeks of build-up, it looked like Furious Ford had a perfect opportunity to seize the championship for itself. But unfortunately, Cutie Pie was uh, able to retain the championship and shut Ford down. With that, Furious Ford is getting 4 points and the retaining champion Cutie Pie Cook is getting 8 points for the victory tonight. The second match was a match between Old Master Sal and Marshall David. A very cruelly match, um, but well, I would say one cru cruelly, but I really meant to say it was one sided, as Master Sal was barely fighting back, if not fight fighting back at all, as Marshall David took full advantage of the situation and completely shut down the old master. For the record, Sal is getting two points here, and David for the victory is getting four points. The third match, we saw the match between Outlaw Casey and Philip Foster. Uh, Philip donning a new kind of an outfit, a, new, a, a completely new kind of a style, no doubt about it. But easily recognizable and uh, a very eager fight here with Casey. Unfortunately for him, his new style and looks were no match for Casey's uh, good old-fashioned tactics, making Casey the winner and Philip the loser tonight. 
with that, Casey is getting four points and Philip is getting two, two points. The fourth match was a uh, final chapter in the act between Taking Young and Lord Lovenberg. But I would rather we these two had. It's it's settled right here with Taken finally climbing to the top and claiming his spot. Uh, well, claiming his spot in the spotlight. Taken is getting four points for the victory, and Lord Lovenberg is getting two points. The fifth match we had a tornado tag team match between the, uh, the Net Natural Disasters versus Caitlin O'Neill and Selena Bochamp. The new plats definitely uh, were on top tonight and they were completely dominating the match throughout and throughout. Even though the natural decided disasters gave up a good fight, they ultimately fell short. As such, natural disasters Whitney and Riley are getting two points each, with and Selena and Caitlin are getting four points. The sixth match we had a handicap match, a one-on-two tornado tag team match. Featuring Anna Cross going up against Isabella Garcia and Sweet Marie. Marie and Isabella looking for a bit of payback after Anna Cross attacked first Gloria and then Marie. A match she was really excited to win, but unfortunately she was unable to fight off two brawlers at once. Nevertheless, a victory is a victory, and for that, Isabella and Marie are getting four points both while Anna is stuck with just two points. The seventh match we saw an ending to the War Raiders saga. A very, very devastating end at that. As we saw Carly Earl losing to Wolf Anderson. Carly Earl is once again fleeing from the ring right after the match ended. This time it was his shame as Wolf was the victorious one tonight. For this match, Carl Jarl is gonna be getting two points and Wolf Anderson is gonna be getting four points. Sad to say, I believe this will also be the end of the War Raiders tag team. I don't see any way these two could make the team work out anymore. The eighth match was a triple threat match. No drama involved here. Just pure good old wrestling talent. And boy, these brawlers did put on quite the show. We had Caleb Flash, Captain Cooper and Dr. Edwards all stepping in into the ring, but ultimately Caleb Flash was the victor tonight. However, due to their outstanding performance on all of all brawlers' parts, all of them will be getting one additional point. As such, the winner of the match, Caleb Flash, will be getting five points tonight. Captain Cooper gets three points and Dr. Edwards gets three points as well. The ninth match was the Pure Wrestling Championship match between Marfa Baker and Kathy Gardner. Marfa coming in with a bit of a beef against her now former tag team partner. Yes, again, another tag team that that, it, that has been as of now disbanded due to the drama involved between the two. Anyway, Marfa Baker was able to get back her Pure Wrestling Championship belt from Kathy, making her the winner and Kathy the loser. Alongside the belt, belt here, Marfa is getting 8 points and Gaffey is getting 4 points. The 10th match was the Men's Extreme Fighting Championship match, a ladder match, triple threat style, between Palosek the Kremlin, Flyboy and Mark Hunter. But all competitors definitely gave their all and at the end of, end of the match, Flyboy was able to ascend to the top of the ladder and claim the belt for himself. With that, Palosek is getting four points for the effort or, or for the match. Flyboy, the winner, is getting the belt and eight points for the victory. And Mark Hunter is getting four points for the match. The 11th match we had a champ Grandmaster title championship match between Big Ham and Butcher Pedro. These two have been fighting it out for weeks, and no doubt about it, the uh, Grandmaster title was uh, just just a bit of uh, extra extra on the side, as these two really wanted to just to square out their uh, squabbles with each other. Ultimately, Big Ham was able to get the victory tonight, making him the new Grandmaster yet again, and giving him eight points in the season. Meanwhile, Butcher Pedro is left with just four points. The 12th match we had a steel cage match, this one for the strongest of brawlers title. 
Thunderstorm and Trey challenging Blue Brute for the title. Unfortunately for him, Blue Brute was able to escape the cage. And with that, he's taking the championship with him, retaining championship. As such, Andre is getting 4 points for the match, and the retaining champion Blue Brute is getting 8 points. The 13th match, we had a no holds barred match between Queen Raiden and Christina Van Bordis. The most exciting matchup of the entire season so far. And no doubt about it, uh, the, uh, knowing that these two are now done with this, it, it, it's a bit sad. You, you gotta look at this with a bit of melancholy. Ultimately coming to the top, Finn Raiden was able to finish the job tonight. Uh, despite Christina having a very strong lead on her, was, Finn was ultimately able to get the pinfall victory here. With that, Finn is getting 4 points for the match, uh, for, uh, match victory here. And Christina is getting 2 points. And finally the main event of tonight, we had Julia Rose and Magic Mackie going up against each other in an extreme fighting championship match. These two rivals, you just gotta love when you see them. And it was a very, very close match. It could have ended either way, but ultimately Magic Maggie was able to get the victory tonight. With that, Mad Maggie is still retaining the extreme fighting championship and getting eight points for the, her victory. As for Julia, she's getting four points for the good effort. We'll, we'll be now taking a look at the news and what's left of season 2. We only have two, two, two weeks left before the end of the season, so yeah. Anna Cross has been cleared by the medical staff to compete once again. Yuri Baiku came out of his title match with a win, successfully defending the Men's Pure Wrestling Championship to continue his reign. Wolf Anderson defeated Carly Jarl in tonight's big match. After going back and forth for weeks, will this be the end of the Super Brawler's rivalry, or is it just the beginning of something bigger? Marfa Baker has won the Women's Pure Wrestling Championship, and Flyboy has won the Men's Extreme Fighting Championship. Congratulations to the new champions as well as the retaining champions. Wait a minute, this doesn't say... It doesn't say anything about Big Ham winning the championship. How weird, okay. Like I said, we only have two weeks left of the second season now. As we get closer and closer to the end of September, the Survivor Series looms ever closer. And know that about it, it's gonna be one heck of a show there. But before that, we still have uh, six shows remaining. This has been the Pro Masters Premium Show Payback Event. I have been your host, Kupari Parta, and wish you all a very good rest of your night.